Good morning, YouTube. It's July 5th, 2012, 10.40 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here in Northern California, and this is Minister Paul. <clears throat> you know, it, it's been really hard for me to restart this channel after so much uh, anger and hatred, and that's what it was, anger and hatred, and attacks, not only by people, but spirits. You know, the real battle is that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And, uh, you know, as I look at these videos, and I, I'm, the, the, the good news is that Christ is still risen and still on the throne. But, but as I look at all these videos in front of me, 200 videos. For example, I really want to upload this. Uh, there's so many of them. I mean... If you, I'll, I'll take a screenshot of them later, but like with this Romans 10 video, it's it's a uh, it's an hour long. I'm just giving you what I'm up against, and um, it was made on June 3rd. You know, I'm just trying to pick through them, and, and its size is uh, over a gig. You know. And, and then I have one called June 6th Prophecy that's 11 minutes long. I, I can upload that one. Uh, there's a teaching on agape love. There's a four-part series teaching on Acts 6. I mean, each, each just one video is uh, 500 megs. So you figure that's, that's two gigs. I mean, and there's so many on it. Agape love and all my dreams and all. I mean, I had a whole section on testimony, 200 videos, and I'm like, Lord, where do I start? And see, this this is the the challenge, you know. And I'm you know I'm I'm redoing my internet so you know I can't get hacked again. I'm getting calls still from people. I mean, I believe it's the government. They're calling me. I know it sounds crazy, but you got to understand. And when the church was first being formed, matter of fact, I was just reading this yesterday. I wish I could remember. I think it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord. I think it's uh, uh, First John. You know how at the at the end they have First John one, First John two, First John three. Let's go there. I think it's First John. Just gonna can I just flow with the Holy Spirit for a minute? I think it's first John two. This is the, the power of the Holy Spirit. My main message that I got from the Lord is you know, it, it's a fresh thing, it's a it's how you wanna you know receive it. I see I had made a video, that's another video I made, it's called My Goal of Reaching Two Thousand Souls. I have set a lifetime goal to reach two thousand people. And I believe the only way I can really do that is, is through the internet. Uh, Second John, at the end of the Bible, it goes 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. I'll put a link, I suppose. We'll see. But uh, this is going to really be fascinating. Can I just have like 20 minutes of your time this morning? Because I don't know which videos to upload or not. Uh, so as I sat here praying, Lord, why? He, re he told me, the devil, we have an enemy that goes about like a roaring lion seeking who he can kill, steal, or destroy. And if you're not careful, sin literally, it says, and we'll get to that, it just lies at the door. One version said it crouches at the door. Sin is just waiting for you. We were born into sin. God, Christ set us free of that sin, but that doesn't mean sin isn't still in the world if you if you doubt sin is not in the world, just take a look around. You can see its effects all over the whole entire world. So when I set that goal of 2,000 people, the devil launched an unprecedented attack against this ministry. And here I am still standing on the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. And that's the only foundation that will stand. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his words shall never pass away. He's the rock of ages. He told Peter, look, you are Peter. And on this rock, what rock? Him. He's the rock. Peter wasn't the rock. Peter, uh, Jesus. See, people misunderstand that. P 
Peter comes from the word Cephas, meaning little stone, not rock of ages, little stone. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the gates of hell, they can prevail, you know, against a lot of things, but they can't prevail against the blood of Jesus Christ. So I said, okay, Lord, just give me a word, because here's the thing. I'm going to reach those 2,000 souls. And, you know, I had 200 videos up, and the Lord revealed to me, the P as I upload a new video, like now I think I have maybe five videos and maybe five subscribers. There's two ways to look at each day when you wake up. First of all, waking up was a gift from God. What am I going to do with it? Second of all, God says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? So this, to me, this is a new thing. This is a new opportunity for, for God to reach new people by using me as a mouthpiece. See, if I had 200 videos, follow me on this. I know there's channels where they have a thousand videos and people have been following them for years. Usually when I go to a new channel and I see a thousand videos and I hit sub, I mean, how many people just raise your hand and say, let's be honest today. You can't lie in front of God. Well, do you go back and watch all 1,000 of those videos? See, the devil would lie in my ear because that's what he does is lie and tell me all those videos were a waste. But I had 28,000 views. That means that at least 20,000 people just watched my videos. 20,000 people. See, the devil is a liar. So now as I upload a new word, with new wine, it's not a different word, it's just to new people with new revelation knowledge. They will e be easier to find, like this message right here. It'll be easier to find. So how do I start? Well, first of all, in faith. And, and second of all, realizing that God will turn everything to the good for those who are willing to believe. And to just press forward at any cost to reach those 2,000 realizing that the attack that came against me failed and then press on so in like in second John 1 thank you Holy Spirit says the elder uh, the el this is a will blow your mind the elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth and not I only but also they that have known the truth for the truth's sake which dwell in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Verse 4, 2 John 1. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy Father walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Anybody ever seen this before? Do you know back in those days churches were underground? See, now, there, now you have 45,000 people in a football stadium, and you got people, sometimes you never once hear them plead the blood of Jesus or even hold up a Bible and talk about Jesus. They're talking and giving motivational speeches. There's no persecution coming against that church because they're not advancing the kingdom of God. I'm just being real. You start talking about the blood of Jesus, and you start winning new souls to the Lord, and you start getting people healed and set free and delivered. Are you seeing that on these the, 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 the sports arena full of 45,000 people. Are you seeing the people's hands laid on with the elders of the church coming together and them getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, throwing their canes down for the rest of their life walking? You best believe that that's a threat to Satan and he will come against that church. If there's no th attack coming against your ministry or your household, you, then you're not a threat to the enemy. That's how warfare works. So he back then they did churches in houses. You could have a Bible study. The Lord has put it on my heart and I just got a message too. I'm going to address the answer to this because uh, I have somebody, I have an appointment today at noon and it's almost 11 here. I, I want to, I have a new neighbor here. Remember I told you SAC PD officer lived over there and uh, I lost three of my neighbors uh, to foreclosures. And we remain here just because of God's mercy and grace. Um, 
I want to go. I want to. I want to go to him. I found out he's a chaplain at Beale Air Force Base, and the only reason I found out that is my neighbor over here, George, who's been here. When we moved here, it was dirt. We picked out our our lots on dirt. We we've been here seven years, thirty minutes uh, north of Sac. They just get out of Sac. Everybody moved out of Sac. Violence got so bad. He invited me to his house for emergency meeting. Everybody remember that? Well. He he's, he goes to uh, Calvary Christian Center in Yuba City. So I got the idea that I think if I if I went to her, she's a widow next door. Her husband also worked at Bill and died on Father's Day last year. So I bless him. I help you know we bring it, take out her trash and bring in her trash. She's just sad and lonely. You know my mother was a widow too. So from my my uh, step down. The last 10 years of her life, 20 years maybe she spent as a widow. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Here's my idea, and to answer that person, I want to go to this neighbor. you got to be bold. And that neighbor, and that neighbor, and that neighbor. That's just like five people. And just pick a night. It don't have to be traditional Wednesday at 7. Just pick a night that works for all five of us. And, have, and bring your wife and start a Bible study. Do you know I know a pastor out here that has... Um, they're, they're working on a church that has almost 500 people that it, it started with four people in a Bible study just like in, you know so but it takes boldness to go knock on your neighbor's door and say look I want to I want to start a Bible study uh, you know uh, you interested in getting together and all interacting and reading the word and we'll just pick a chapter and study it you know it can be what day works for you that's how I would start what day works for you? Because Wednesday at seven isn't going to work for everybody. It may be, it may be Saturday at noon. Whatever it is, make sure it works for everybody and that they're they're willing to show up and start off with prayer and end in prayer. Uh, but sometimes all it takes is the boldness to knock on the door. I've, I've done it before, and I'm telling you. So there's ways to reach people, and that's why we're down here on Earth is to reach people. But in this letter, he's writing to an elect lady. Read it. The elder. An elect lady and her children. Do you understand? He's not talking about her two daughters. He's talking about the woman in the church underground. A lot of people may not believe this, but let's just read it. In Second John, he calls her the elder, an elect lady and her children. And then he calls her lady again, which I found really, you're going to start seeing things in the word you've never seen before. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 5, he says, And now I beseech thee, lady, not, not as though I write a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. People have a, a wrong perception of what love is. You don't have to love somebody as, I'm not even going to go there. I'm, we're going to get in. Just let the word speak for itself. Verse 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And this is love. Okay, so he's going to explain what love is to what's called the brethren. The brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Yes, you are to love your enemies. You're not to love them enough as they trample you and attack your ministry and pervert your ministry and destroy your ministry. Uh, you're not to say, thank you very much for ruining my ministry and attacking my channel. Uh that the, the, that's not love you know what I mean the Bible says be angry but do not sin am I angry my whole YouTube got it taken down yes am I over it yes did I sin about it no I forgave see that's love am I happy with this person no I'm just being honest no I'm not happy but I'm turning it into a new thing through the power and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ who made me a new man so, so in verse 6, he says, and this is love, that we walk after his commandments. In other words, people say they love God, but do you walk after what he's commanded you to do? Do you follow his instructions? That's love. You can say, wake up and say, I love God and I love people on here all day, every day. But are you following his commandments and his instructions? And then it says, this is the commandment. That as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Walk in what? Love in his commandments. It's as simple as that. Now here what? Seven. I believe this is a short chapter. And I'll close with this. Uh, it just God took it in a whole different direction. 
because I was going to do a thing on Genesis 3 and 4, which I will. For many deceivers are entered into the world. And you can say in July 12, 2000, uh, in July 5th, 2012, many deceivers have entered into the world. See, this word is alive and applies to today. Who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. There's some people that they don't believe that Jesus Christ came in. The gospel is that he, he, he came in from heaven, became flesh, died on a cross, and rose again for your sins. There's people that don't believe that or don't preach that. It says, and what does he say? This is a deceiver and an antichrist. In other words, if you're not Christ, which is an anointed Messiah, a savior of the world, John the Baptist, he said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Man, when, when Jesus Christ was in the uh, Mary's womb and she went to go visit her cousin and, and her cousin had John the Baptist in her womb you know that it says that John the Baptist was full of the Holy Ghost since birth and when Jesus just still in the womb of, the, of, the, of Mary walked into the room because they were running from Herod because Herod was trying to kill him and all this read some of these stories it's amazing but they're true that's the most amazing thing about it it says the belly leapt in her womb. Why? Because it knew the Holy Ghost, even in her womb, it knew that the, the, that the Savior of the world, God had finally sent his son down for the, to, for the shedding and the remission of his sins, hallelujah, to set the world free that we could have a way out of here. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Go all the way back to, to Genesis 3, where he took Adam and Eve and he took animals and, and he wrapped them in bloody animals. Because you know why? Because because he knew God knows the the commandments is without the shedding of blood. Read Hebrews nine. See, because I wanted to upload Hebrews nine, but it it would take like an hour and a half to upload and process. That's just one of the chapters. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sins. See, but that law has been fulfilled. It wasn't done away with. It was fulfilled by the blood of Jesus. So if you're not preaching the blood of Jesus then you're not Christ, you're Antichrist. Hallelujah. I don't know where God's going with this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. How many people want a full reward from God and not this world? Uh, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in what? The doctrine of Christ. Hear me out, how? Have not God. If you're not abiding, remember I just did a thing on Psalms 91 where it says you need to to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That means to stay in there, not to come in and out one day to be in there and the next day be out. But you got to abide in the doctrine. In other words, just go back a couple verses. You got to follow His commandments. If you follow the commandments of God in love, you will, I guarantee you, you will abide in His doctrine. Uh, I, I bet you if I googled the word abide, it didn't mean to one day do it and the next day not. Here it is, what, Thursday, the day after a holiday. You know what I'm doing? I'm abiding in his doctrine. As I await and if someone to knock on my door at any minute, I'm abiding in his doctrine and love. I'm not mad at anybody but the devil for trying to stop me from reaching the 2,000 souls. But I'll press on, soldiers. Come on, saints. Somebody with me? He hath both the Father and the Son. Man, that's a powerful thing. If you abide in the doctrine of the anointed Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was and is and is to come, who said, I will never leave you or forsake you to the end of time. He's coming back for his saints. And then you have both the Creator and the Son. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And if they're coming, hear, hear me out. If they're come in, the, this is even the one I was going to read. This is something I was reading personally yesterday. And I have, I'm telling you the truth, I have Genesis 3 and 4 open in front of me for a message. And here I have somehow ended up in 2 John 1. Why? Because I'm letting the Holy Spirit tell me what to say, not having no personal agenda on him. Just to reach those 2,000. Hallelujah. What are you doing with your life? What goals have you set? And do they line up with what God has called you to be? See, sometimes I rush. I'm not rushing. God's going somewhere today. I'm going to take one step closer to that 2,000. And the devil is a liar. And he's under my feet today in the name of Jesus. It's 1101.
one one oh one. I've been seeing those numbers a lot. Do you know that seven five is twelve? If you added seven five, that's twelve. Twelve. Think about it. I'm just flowing. Verse ten. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what doctrine? The doctrine of Jesus Christ crucified and rose again. That doctrine. Receive him not into your house. He's writing a letter to the elect lady and her uh, household, which I guarantee you they was having church there. Prove me wrong. So if somebody comes in here with a false doctrine, and this is what's wrong with new Christians today, they're being deceived, tossed to and fro. And in 2 Timothy says, you toss to and fro with every kind of perverted false doctrine or lawlessness. It's an antichrist. It's a doctrine of demons. If they're not preaching Christ crucified and set you free and you got to follow his commandments too. And you know, they're making up their own Bibles and their own rules. If they come to your door or to, to, with that nonsense, it says, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Uh, uh, in other words, don't even receive what he has to say. And verse 11 says, for he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write. Now, now this is deep. I'm going to put this in another translation real quick for verse 10 and then we'll close. Verse 11. This is so deep to me it hit me hard. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So if you accept his, uh, if you accept his doctrine, you, you become a partaker of his evil that he brought to your house. Because remember, if it's not Christ, it's Antichrist. And there's an Antichrist spirit sweeping this world right now. Now here's what here's what he says, this apostle is. Verse 12, having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink. See, he, he has a lot of things to say to this elect lady in her household. But he don't want to put them on paper. Don't you find that fascinating? There's a lot of things I want to tell my father that I'm afraid to talk about on the phone. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. I, I want to come. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. In other words, look, there's some things I got to tell you that I can't write down, but I'm believing that I can come see you face to face and our joy is going to be full. And then he closes out with 13. It says, the children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. So she's an elect sister. Does anybody even know who she is? They, they, they talk about how woman can't be a even preach the gospel in this. My mom evangelized for 50 years. I'm going to go in the Amplified and start at 10 again. And then close out how much time we got. Wow, this ran long. Sorry. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, this Amplified Bible in, uh, I'll put link, 2 John 1, verse 10. Read along with me, please. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, is disloyal to what Jesus Christ taught. Do not receive him. Remember how it said God speak. Do not accept him and do not welcome or admit him. This is for somebody today that's being taught a false doctrine. You're becoming a part of the evil by accepting the evil and receiving the evil. Because it's not about Christ crucified and the shedding of blood, bringing remission of sin, walking in love and obeying his commandments. Read it. Just read it for yourself and ask God to give you revelation. I'm, I'm no better than you. God is no respecter of persons. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. And he who, uh, you know, uh, wants to uh, uh, follow me, you got to deny yourself and pick up your cross. This, this is not an easy walk. Don't think that I any, have any more uh, power than you do. I'm just re reading the word and dedicating time to reach others because I've set that goal. And it comes at a great cost. But I'm willing to do it. And you can do the same thing I'm doing. I promise you. Because it's not about my power. It's the power of God. Do not uh, accept him. Do not welcome or admit him into your house. Or bid him Godspeed. Or give him any encouragement. You Don't even encourage him in his nonsense. You know the, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me just now. You can either believe this or not. When you set up your Bible study, which I'm going to set up a Bible study, some of the people are going to try to sneak in like grievous wolves, coming in like sheep's clothing. Really, they're not coming in to edify your, your Bible study, the body of Christ. When you come together, that's a body. You know, that, that's a group of people trying to 
to get closer to God through his doctrine and in love, there's going to be some people, you got to call them out. And if they come in here with a false doctrine and start talking nonsense, I did this one time when we had 12 people at a Bible study. This dude started talking nonsense and craziness that didn't line up with the Word of God. It was the craziest doctrine I've ever heard. It wasn't lining up with the true Word of God and my discernment kicked in. And I was a leader. These were 12 leaders that people, in other words, you had to have a titled position in this church. I got up and said, you're out of line. You're out of order, and I walked out. And and later, and I and I came home feeling all guilty and stuff. Later on, I found out that that dude, no, no names mentioned, had quit the church, and everybody else wanted to walk out too, because they felt a different spirit. They felt an antichrist spirit in this, and, and they'd been biting their tongue for months. But they weren't willing to just walk out. They were encouraging him. Are you with me? They were encouraging false doctrine, but not me. I got up and walked out. And in your Bible study, if someone starts preaching nonsense, try to correct them. And get people just stay rooted and grounded in love in the true doctrine. But man, if they're in there to bring division, God in prayer, when at prayer at night, God will reveal to you, don't receive that nonsense. You don't have to, I'm telling you. Verse 11, for he who wishes him success, who encourages him, wishing him Godspeed, is a partaker in his evil doings. I have many things to write to you, but I prefer not to do so with paper and ink. Why? Isn't that interesting? Because he wanted to talk to her face to face so that our joy may be complete. It would have, wouldn't have been the same if he wrote it down to her. The children of your elect, chosen. Someone asked me, who's the elect one? Well, right there, it says it's chosen to you. So this was a woman, head of a, a, a household. Says the child, that's what it says. The children of your elect chosen sister, not brother, and not him. It's lady and sister in her. Wish to be remembered to you. Amen. And amen. And it says in the Amplified, so be it. Thank you for your time today. I know this has been long. I know there's a message in here for somebody. In other words, the Holy Spirit wouldn't have told me to make it. There's a million other videos I could have uploaded on 7-5-2012 at 11.08 a.m. I, I bless you in the name of the Lord. I ask that the Lord would would bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine on you and bring you revelation, knowledge, and wisdom and understanding that all your needs are met according to his riches and glory and that the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost would just reign over you and, and, and all you're getting get understanding of his word. That is Christ Jesus crucified and yes, risen and sitting at the right hand of God. The true gospel that sets people free hunger and thirst for righteousness and eagerly desire to give and 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 uh, go out in the great commission to all the world and reach as many people as you can through the doctrine by following his commandments in love be in other words be a be a doer of the word not just a hearer only deceiving yourselves i thank you father for this word i thank you that you're doing a new thing in my ministry and I thank you for your protection and covering. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. The divine blood speaks. And we'll get to that in Genesis 3 and 4 in my next teaching. Amen.